A much-anticipated season of Spider Basketball opened with a game that set the tone for what was to come. It featured a remarkable comeback, a fantastic finish, the debut of transfer Blake Francis, and the return of Nick Sherrod. Not only did Sherrod return from last season's devastating knee injury, he led the way. 27 points, 8 rebounds. Francis chipped in 14. Jacob Gilliard did what he does. 24 points, 8 assists, 5 steals. The Spiders rallied from 10 down with under 2 minutes to go against a St. Francis team that, like the Spiders, would go on to a 20-win season. And it looked like the Red Flash would win this one. But the end was just the beginning. St. Francis at Richmond, Friday, November 8th, 2019. Let's join the action from the Robin Center late in the first half. There's the first points for Blake Francis as a Richmond Spider, and it's a three-pointer. And why not? As a sophomore at Wagner, 102 three-pointers. Yeah, they really needed that, the Spiders. Mm -hmm. Good timing on that three for Blake Francis. Yeah, more than anything. That's a quick shot by Stewart and nothing but net. Let's see if they go back to that 2-3 zone. They are. Again, you got to attack the zone in the middle and down the short corner. Francis too strong on the second one. Tyler Burton went up over everybody but couldn't hang on to the offensive rebound. Sure did. See a lot more of that. He likes to play above the rim. He gives the Spiders that athleticism they've been looking for as an offensive rebounder. And as a shot blocker, Burton swats that one off the backboard and the Spiders come up with it. See if that's the shot in the arm the home team needs. And at the other end, the two-hand dunk by Tyler Burton. The block at one end, the stuff at the other. Yeah, got rewarded by Grant Golden. Really nice look by Grant Golden. Nice cut by Burton. Meredith misses. Burton again with terrific position. And the over-the-back foul on Miles Thompson. How about the freshman bringing the Robin Center crowd to life? Yeah, that's what he, he brings to the crowd. That athleticism, that energy, he's going to be a good player, Rob. It's a nice block right there. Meredith looked like he had an easy layup, and what a great pass. Good cut and a finish. At both ends of the court by Tyler Burton. That's him with the ball, and now Francis. Nick Sherrod had eight early points. Spiders down seven, four and a half to go, first half. Sherrod got himself into a little bit of trouble, but forced the action and drew the foul. Yeah, Nick was determined to get to the rim that time. Nothing going on, a lot of, a lot of standing around by Richmond. And usually a lot more movement. And it's interesting, when Grant Golden went out, Red Flash decided to go man to man. If that trend continues. Nick Sherrod, terrific free throw shooter, knocks down the first. Of course, he was the Spiders Iron Man before that injury, playing pretty much every game as a sophomore and into that junior season. Makes one of two at the line, Spiders down six. Tyler Stewart, the redshirt sophomore, knocked away. Burton had it but couldn't hang on. Yeah. Well, he's all over the court, I like, though. I like his energy, Bobby. And a lot of energy off that bench. 12 on the shot clock. Spiders will stay man-to-man, -man, out of bounds under. Burton now guarding Stewart. Good defense there. But another offensive rebound, and that will result in a layup by Isaiah Blackman. Yeah, that time, Keith Braxton just wanted it more. That time, took it off the Spiders and found Blackman underneath. The lead is eight for St. Francis. Could have been a reach in there, That's no sure. call. <laughs> Tyler Burton from deep missed that one. Blackman out of control, and that'll be a held ball, which will still belong to St. Francis. The red flash with an eight-point lead on the Spiders. They've already had seven players in the scoring column, led by Keith Braxton with nine. 
The Spiders getting a spark from the freshman. Tyler Burton with the block and the dunk. Back in a moment. One of the things we talked about was the depth of the Spiders, Greg, going 10 deep. I just wonder if in the second half, Coach Mooney shortens that bench a little bit and goes with the five guys who can get into a rhythm, to use one of your words on our keys to the game. That was a double block shot by two Spiders up on the glass. And back to offense. Sherrod from deep. Bank swish from three for Nick Sherrod. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he called that one. He no, had he had that puzzled look on his face as if to say, I'll take it, but why'd that go in? Yeah. But sometimes you need to be lucky and good, and Nick Sherrod both. Golden with a block shot out of bounds. Good recovery by Golden that time. He got beat on the baseline. Thompson came over a nice block. That's a nice block, really nice block. Golden and Burton on the one, and then Golden on the second one. Grant was amongst the league leaders in blocks last year, too. Just didn't talk much about that because of his points, rebounds, and assists. That's a scoop shot up and under That's a nice for move. Tyler Stewart. Real nice move. He's a nice pickup for St. Francis, the transfer from Binghamton. Gilliard still without a field goal here in the first half. Golden tries his hand at a three, it's short. Tyler Burton scrambles after the loose ball and Jake Wojcik with the three. Great hustle by Burton, loose ball. Turns into a three point play, remember that one Bob. That was a really nice play by Burton to get that ball. Hustle points for Burton, three points for Wojcik. Braxton finds Blackman. Sherrod the rebound, Spiders making a run. Down four, a minute 50. Golden to the basket. Couldn't get it to spin off of the backboard and Braxton back the other way. Meredith lined up the three. He was wide open. Yeah, they lost him in a transition to defense. Well, he can't, can't lose Meredith. He can stroke it. Now back to a seven point advantage. Sherrod in double figures with 12. He's got game high honors here in the first half. He's got a lane to the basket. Missed the layup. Braxton lost the ball. Wojcik dives on the floor and he's fouled. Good play. It's another good hustle play, right? You saw one from Burton and that one from Wojcik. Yeah, getting on the floor. That was on Keith Braxton, his second team foul. Burton knocking that ball away, yeah, and it's kind of really a tough active. foul there on Braxton, to be honest. Yeah. Burton's been really active. Really active. Yeah, and I saw Nick, and he's uh, kind of limping off, a little funny run on that layup, Bob. He didn't look good. Came down a little awkward. So, uh, give him a little breather. Wojcik on the front end of the one and one. Jake, a great free throw shooter last year. You'd love to see him get to the line more often. He was 32 of 39, 82%, mostly a standstill jump shooter. And he only makes one out of two. A minute to go, first half, St. Francis with the ball on a six-point lead. Randall Gaskins and back to Meredith. Oh, they're gonna get a little travel there at time. Gilliard knocked that away. Gaskins lost it out of bounds. Good defense on the perimeter that was on by the Spiders. Fourth turnover, charge now to St. Francis. It's really good D on the perimeter. Pressure. Now some pressure as the Spiders inbound. Gilliard into the forecourt. Behind his back, splits two defenders, and there's his first bucket of the game, and one. Uh, Jake has been kind of lackadaisical on the offense, look, not looking for a score, and he's finding other guys, but nice dribble drive to the basket, protected the basketball, and picked up the foul on the scoop shot. But he really hasn't been forcing anything on the offensive end. Now he's only taken three shots in the game, two of those three-pointers. Very patient. 
Averaged 16 points a game last season, 77% free throw shooter. Preseason all conference pick, first team. And all, all defensive defense. team, yes. yes. St. Francis can just about go for the last shot, just about a second difference. You see the game clock in white and the shot clock in yellow. The ball is in Keith Braxton's hand, Gustafson guarding him. Braxton, nice hang in the air in the bucket. He just powered his way to the hoop on that one. Hilliard whistles it home at the buzzer to end the first half. And we'll see if Jake comes out with the fire that he takes to the locker room at halftime. Spiders will have the ball to start the second half. Blake Francis, the one three-pointer, was saddled with a couple of personal fouls. And it will be Richmond ball. He will inbound right in front of us. We also had a conversation, Greg, didn't we, at halftime with that guy right there and his crew, the officials, and they're shaking their heads a little bit about this whole fake flop interpretation and how they're going to call it all year. So they're still working it out. Yeah, what do you say? Work in progress. Work That's in progress. 2-3 right like, zone, Bob, coming out for red flash. Good ball movement. Gilliard was feeling it from the end of the first half, but he didn't get that one to fall. It would have given Richmond the lead back. Instead, St. Francis with a two-point lead. Gilliard with the steal. That's what he does best, and that's what Nathan Kao does best, and we have a tie game. Yeah, it's starting to see Jake pick up his defensive intensity. Just he's capable of doing that, Bob. Got a steal and an assist on that one. Of course, last year he led the Spiders in both those categories and amongst the league leaders in both. And we've got a tie game. Braxton over KO. Golden up for the rebound. Richmond looking to regain the lead. They have not led. Since about 11 minutes to go in the first half, Blake Francis gives them the lead a minute and 15 seconds into the second half. That's one way to get him out of that zone. He hits some threes, a uh, two-three zone. Dixon Conover, who didn't play very much in the first half, misses that one, and Sherrod rips the rebound away. Francis's pass is knocked away, but it goes right to Gilliard. Back to Gilliard. Three more. There's a timeout real quick. <laughs> Jacob Gilliard has come to life. He is in double figures. And the Spiders just like that with a six-point lead. They have outscored the Red Flash by eight in the first minute and a half of the second half. 18-16 to go to be exact. Richmond by six when we come back to the Robin Center. Well, the Spiders came out of that locker room on fire, Bob, especially Jake Gilliard. Quick hands right there with a steal, and then the fine KO with a quick, easy dunk in the second half. And I just like the energy right here by the Spiders, and then the little guards really picking it up uh, with a big three by both. Jake, uh, Jake Gillier and Blake Francis and the guard play has really picked up for the Spiders and they're getting after them and that's what you need. You need someone to pick up the pressure and pick up the intensity for the Spiders and you saw that from Jake Gillier on both ends of the floor. 8 nothing to start the second half. 11 unanswered points going back to the three by Gilliard at the end of the first half. Another second chance opportunity will put an end to that though and Keith Braxton is their guy to stop runs. He's a really patient player, really smart player. Keith Braxton gets guys up in the air, doesn't panic, he takes his time. 13 points, six rebounds. A twisting acrobatic and one by Jacob Gilliard. We've seen him do this before, Greg. He is taking over this game. Uh, he has to, he has the talent and ability to do that. And that was just a pinpoint pass. Watch this pass by Grant Golden on a replay, Bob. It's a pinpoint pass by a 6 10 center out. In the court. That's a, just a really nice pass. And now Jacob Gilliard could become the Spiders' leading scorer just like that. He was also quiet with only one point 
through about the first 19 minutes of the game, and now he's got 13 to lead all Spider scores, and Richmond's lead is up to seven. Scott Meredith and Gilliard right in his jersey. The Spiders watch Meredith knock down three threes in the first half. Caressi, pretty good defense, forced a tough shot by Stewart, but a tough offensive rebound and an and one for Miles Thompson. Yeah, that's a strong rebound by Miles Thompson, 6'6 six, six sophomore, just took it off of Matt Grace that time and finished it. So that is their ninth offensive rebound of this game. Remember, they had 10 on Tuesday against VCU. They don't quit. That's one thing. They come after you. Mm -hmm. Miles Thompson, a 65% free throw shooter last season. Nearly had a double-double Tuesday. 10 points, 8 rebounds. Cannot complete the three-point play. And Grace with the spider rebound. Yeah, they came out of that 2-3. That's you make a couple threes. Play that man-to-man. -man. Gilliard and Francis. Got it. Blake Francis with the dribble drive and the hoop. Uh, you see the guards starting to pick up yeah. their intensity, Bob. And then Blake Francis in foul trouble, so he didn't play that much first half. He's playing a little bit more under control and relaxed. Ten points here in the second half between Gilliard and Francis. That foul's on Caressi. It'll be his second. <laughs> Trying to prevent Thompson from getting the ball there. Team foul number two in the second half on Richmond. And Caressi to the bench. Andre Gustafson in. Gilliard knocks that one away. Crowd wanted to travel, so did the Richmond bench. Meredith underneath. The shot missed by Blackman, but followed in by Tyler Stewart. Yeah, I'll tell you what, the Spiders are getting after him on the perimeter. Need to keep doing that, yeah. whether you get the whistle or not. You yeah. just said it, Greg. They're getting after him. St. Francis back to the zone, it looks like. Yeah, 2 3. KO shoots over it in the paint. Confident looking shot by Nate. Yeah, that's the shot though, Bob. You're going to get that in that 2-3 zone. Spiders are 6 for 7 from the field in the second half. And it's reflected on the scoreboard. KO guarding Stewart. The step back is good. Wow. Nice looking shot by Tyler Stewart, yeah. who's got 13. Yeah, that's a nice looking move right there. And a five-point Richmond lead. Good ball movement. K.O. had it knocked away, got it right back. Francis around the rim. Gilliard going for the steal, knocked it out of bounds. He thought he knocked it off of Miles Thompson, but he didn't get the call. It'll get us to a timeout with 15, 18 to go in the second half. The Spiders have come roaring back. They are six for eight from the floor in the second half, and they own a five-point lead with 15, 18 to play. With Greg Beckwith, I'm Bob Black. Hope you're enjoying Atlantic 10 basketball with the Richmond Spiders tonight in their season opener, leading St. Francis 57-52. Greg, the late wake-up call for number zero, Jacob Gilliard. That's why he's smiling now. Four for seven from the field, couple of three-pointers, has made all three of his free throws. Four assists, no turnovers, and three steals. Uh, he's locked in now, Bob. I thought he let the game come to him in the first half. He didn't force anything, and he he really has turned it up out here. A lot of pressure on the perimeter. Jake, you know. And now some pressure in the backcourt. Francis went for the steal, didn't get it. Golden back in the game for Richmond. Blackman, Stewart, and now Braxton, guarded by Gustafson. He's had that matchup all night when Andre's been in the game. Blackman kisses it high off the window. It's a nice set coming out of Tom Alp from St. Francis. Couple double down screens. 
for Blackman, and he took it to the basket. Blackman's a redshirt senior. He's had some injury problems. A couple of ACLs have cost him a lot of college time. Still, as we said, a 1,000-point score. Great look. Gustafson to Golden for the layup. Nifty bounce pass by the Goose. Yes, a lot more movement, Bob. Cutting. Golden in double figures now with 11 points. His 57th career double figure game. Braxton around a screen. Gustafson will draw the foul. Yeah, That's smart. a heady play by a senior player. Yep, smart. He's really patient, understands the game. Braxton, I'm talking about, drew that foul. Braxton last year in becoming the Northeast Conference Player of the Year almost averaged the double-double, 16 points, 9.8 rebounds. And I think you mentioned this when he shot those technicals in the first half. He gets to the free throw line a lot. Yes, he does. And he just understands the game, Bob. You can tell experienced players when you see it. It's just nice and comfortable with his game and understands where to score. He can score from on the floor. Jacob Gilliard getting a breather here in the second half. Spider crowd looking for a back-to-back -back free throw miss here from Keith Braxton. Not going to let that happen. Yep. <laughs> He's their leading scorer with 14. In fact, that's game high honors. Jake Wojcik with Gustafson, Sherrod, Francis, and Golden, the five on the court for the home team. Quick move by Francis, can't get it to dance in. Battles for his own rebound, gets the follow blocked. Braxton with a couple of behind the back dribbles. Stewart in the corner, Meredith from the wing, his fourth three-pointer. Yeah, you gotta know where he is. The spider lead trimmed to one. Tough handoff, Golden to Sherrod. Nick has not scored here in the second half. Golden missed that one off the right side of the rim. That time they stood around, the spiders, not, not a lot of movement. And now back comes St. Francis with a chance to regain the lead. Stewart got Sherrod in the air, but missed the jumper, and Francis hits the deck and is fouled. That's a tough guy, though. Yes, he yeah. is. Blake Francis is a tough dude. Got Burton coming in now, Bob. I thought he had a, a really good first half with a lot of energy. I have time. We know a guy on the on the uh, St. Francis bench from my high school. Yeah, yeah Laurel Hollins High School from Uniontown. My high school alma mater. Uh, Bryce Lasky, 6'4", red shirt, freshman. Bobby averaged 33 points wow. his senior year at my <laughs> high school. Not even came close to that. I don't know if I scored that many points. <laughs> Total, <laughs> Total as opposed to average. <laughs> We're not going to see him tonight, though, huh? out with yeah, an injury. Has a foot injury, told me, before the game. So won't see him play out here this evening. Spider lead, still one, and the ball. Hesitation dribble. Francis misses. Burton had it and lost it out of bounds. Yeah, Got to get Jake. Uh, there he is. Jake Gilliard's coming in. And he comes in for Blake Francis. So again, the red flash could regain the lead. They have led by as many as nine. Gaskins, Braxton, now Burton on him. Freshman on senior, senior on freshman. And the step back by Braxton missed. Sherrod had good position and the foul on Tyler Stewart. Yeah, that time the Red Flash were standing around watching mm -hmm. Keith Braxton go one-on-one. -on -one. Today's game is just so hard in a college game to go one-on-one -on -one unless you're extremely quick and a guy like Jake Gilliard can get to your spots. It's really tough. Gilliard with the ball from our sky cam view. He that's, gets fouled. That's, that's what I'm saying. This is a quick move to the basket. 
And he can draw a foul or score. He's just so quick. Heading to a timeout. 11.59 to go here in the second half. Jacob Gilliard will be heading to the free throw line when we come back to try and increase a one-point Richmond Spider lead. Opening night for Spider basketball, a one-point lead on St. Francis. Hey, a shout-out to the Spider field hockey team, which tomorrow on its home turf at Crenshaw Field will play for an Atlantic 10 championship. The Spiders will play St. Joseph's in the championship game at 1 o'clock. Richmond beat UMass today 3-1. to one. Elise Wicklebauer, two goals and an assist to lead the Spiders into the title game tomorrow afternoon at 1, the same time that the Spider football team will continue its playoff push on the road at Villanova. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, some of our crew had to pry themselves away from the basketball game tonight. Chris, to get in the car and head north. Matt McAllister, Dan Walker, Chris Anderson from our broadcast team. Matt Smith and I will follow behind them all in about an hour or an hour and a half. Yeah, did you just call road. me Chris? Did I call you Chris? <laughs> Call me Chris. Well, that would have been a compliment to <laughs> you, right. wouldn't it? Yes, it would have. <laughs> Chris Anderson might not think it's such a compliment. <laughs> he probably won't, right? That's right. Chris Anderson's in the car. Greg Beckwith is at the press table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of two. Jacob Gilliard, Jake. one of two at the line. So he's got 14 and a two-point spider lead. Braxton firing it into the corner. Stewart fires and hits. He's a good-looking player, Stewart. 16 nice. points. Yeah. Nice pickup for the Red Flash. Transfer from Binghamton. One-point lead for the Red Flash. Grant Golden going to work. Gets double-teamed and had it smothered, but it goes right to Nick Sherrod. A fortuitous bounce. Ends up in Nick Sherrod's hand and a three ball. Yeah, Bob, that was his first shot attempt in the second half for Nick. And going to find him more shot opportunities with the Richmond Spiders. Mm -hmm. So he has 15. Gilliard has 14. Golden has 11. Meredith again. That one's too strong. But again, a second chance opportunity. And Braxton swishes it. Yeah, those second chance opportunities are hurting the Richmond Spiders. Well, let's see. That is 11 offensive rebounds and 20 second chance points for St. Francis. And a tie game. Sherrod halfway down and out. And Kuzovic with the rebound. Oh, Meredith is wide open. He's not going to miss that one. Uh, one of the things the Richmond Spiders will have to do when you're playing man-to-man -man defense, Bob, you can't run straight back to the paint. you got to run into the lanes. you got to understand where the shooters are. Golden misses from point blank range. Burton makes a terrific play, grabbing the ball and then throwing it off of Tyler Stewart to maintain Spider possession. Good play by Burton again, Bob. Yeah. Nice play. He is just so active. Both ends of the court. Yeah, they got to get that transition to defense better. Got to understand where the shooters are. You can't run right back into the paint. You got to run to the lanes where these guys are. Well, so much for the deeper three-point shot. Both teams are lighting it up. Gilliard from inside that arc now has 16. Anyway, St. Francis is 9 of 22, 41% from three, and Richmond is 10 of 19, 53% from beyond the arc. Oh, that was an easy one missed on the first opportunity, but the second opportunity by Kuzavis is good. Yeah, they have some really nice sets in the offense against man-to-man -man defense. Gilliard, there goes another deep one, but it's off the rim. And now it's a fast break opportunity for St. Francis. Meredith in transition, thought about it, but didn't take it. Got to get a defensive stop if you're Richmond. Blackman way downtown. He's been fairly quiet, but now he's in double figures with 12. And Chris Mooney's going to use a timeout as St. Francis has built the lead back to six. Yeah, that was a good timeout by the coach. 
Yeah, they got some shooters out there, Bob, and that's the thing. They had a mismatch with Keith Braxton posting up Francis. They had a mismatch, so kind of spread them out, and they found the open shooter, which is Blackman, and hit that three. And a concern, Spider Bench now down six. Got to find a way to get some stops. St. Francis up to 50% now for the game, including 11 of 22 in the second half. Both teams' offenses have been very good. Yeah, they're shooting the ball well on both, both teams, but got to find a way to make some stops. I thought the energy that Jake Gillier brought out on the perimeter put some pressure, more pressure on the perimeter to push the offense out. So both teams are really shooting the ball well in the second half. 11 for 20 for St. Francis. Spiders are 9 for 18 from the field, so... And the three-point numbers are yeah. equally as good. Four for eight for the Red Flash, three for six for Richmond. Francis twisting to the basket. That was a quick first step by Blake, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, one thing about Blake, he attacks. He's in attacky mode on the offensive end. Very hard to stop. Start real quick first step there. Picked up the foul. He was a second-team Northeast Conference standout his sophomore season two years ago, had over 550 points in that sophomore season. Kind of backed away from the line on that one. It was an 81% free throw shooter during that sophomore season. One of two. Uh, he looks like a little solid football player, doesn't he? Blake Francis, his dad was a football player at Virginia Union. His brother played football at Liberty. Uh, he's got a cousin, Marcus Higgins, who played football oh, yeah. in Virginia. GBA, yeah, yeah. So he had football in the blood, so he looks <laughs> like a little football player out there. He's hit the floor. He's all over the place. Glad he's on the basketball court yeah. with the Spiders. Tough shot and a late whistle. Sure looked like Nathan Ko avoided any of that contact as he went up in the air and a very late call on Ko. Yeah, that was a tough one for Nathan. You watch this play. Uh, wow. Not much there. We're going to start calling that. We're going to be here a long time on a whistle fest. That is 17 points for Tyler Stewart. Had 10 double figure games last year at Binghamton before transferring. And he's got 18 tonight. And a seven-point lead with 8.35 to play for St. Francis. Trying to make their second trip to the capital city better than their first. KO out of control and the rebound for Thompson. Yeah, you got to get the ball in Jake Gillard's hands, make plays now for the Spiders mm -hmm. down the stretch here. Meredith even deeper. Yeah, you can't leave him. And I know Jake Gillier probably saved a layup, Bob, when he kind of rotated down in a pick and roll. He was looking for the steal. But you got to remember, Meredith's out there on that wing. You can't leave him. Biggest lead of the game. A 10-point advantage. Kale has his shot blocked. It is all red flash now with under eight minutes to play. Blocked by Golden. Spiders in transition. Francis can't get it. Second opportunity by Blake, can't get it. And Thompson comes out of there with it. And Rob Krimble, their head coach, holds his arms out, palms down, slow it down. We got the ball, we got the lead. We only got 7.20 to play. That's what the St. Francis coach, former captain is saying, three-year starter. They've got the shot clock in single digits. Thompson misses, but another offensive rebound and a follow by Blackman. And another Spider timeout. Got to get those rebounds, Bob. There was no blockout. Man-to-man -man principles, you got to finish it with a blockout. St. Francis has out-rebounded Richmond 35-23. 13 offensive rebounds to the tune of 24 second chance points. And the Red Flash with their biggest lead of the night. 
How did this game turn so dramatically into the favor of that team huddled right there, the St. Francis Red Flash? Well, they're on a 7-0 run and a 12-1 run and a 17-3 run. Meantime, for the Richmond Spiders, they've missed their past five shots. They've made just one of their past eight and haven't scored in a little more than two minutes, Greg Beckwith. Well, the offensive rebounds adds to that misery for the yep. Spiders. 13 offensive rebounds by the Red Flash, Bob. And not shooting the ball well with the Spiders. They don't have any of the second chance opportunities on their end. Now you've got to up the tempo and hope you've got a scoring explosion in you. You mentioned it earlier, St. Francis, one of the highest scoring teams in their conference last year at 76 points per game. They've already eclipsed that with 640 to go. So they had a four out, one in. That was a post up with Golden that time. Tough three by Gustafson. Might have been partially blocked. And now Keith Braxton with 16 points. They have four players in double figures as Francis went for the steal and didn't get it. Scott yeah. Meredith, Tyler Stewart leading the way with 18 each, Keith Braxton 16, and Isaiah Blackman 14. Yeah, if I'm the Spiders right now, Bob, we're looking at this lineup that St. Francis has, you got to put a lot of pressure on these guys in the backcourt. You don't really have a true point guard out here. Keith Braxton is at 6'5", playing point guard for St. Francis. And the Spiders have only committed four team fouls in the second half, so you're right, they can get really aggressive. They did on that one. Braxton, tough shot there, but they still have the ball. And now they'll chew more time. We're under six minutes to go and still 12 on the shot clock. But you've got to get in their jersey now because you're going to want to give fouls eventually and put them at the line and stop the clock. That was a close miss and Golden the rebound. But Grant loses the ball, but a whistle. And a reach-in foul. Yeah, they needed that one. The yes, Spiders they did. They were a little out of control there. And that's just what I thought, Bob. The red flash is not going to leave their point guard. So Meredith's coming back in. And Stewart as well. Two good offensive players. Blackman called on that foul, which will give the Spiders the ball. Team foul number six on St. Francis. Nick Sherrod, 15 points, will inbound 12 of them in the first half. Golden right down the lane to the basket, hangs in the air and puts it home and has a chance for a three-point play. That's a start. Yeah, he's hurt, uh, Bob. He's grabbing his left, left ankle. ankle. Adam Smith, the Spiders athletic trainer, reluctantly coming out to take a look at Grant. Let's see if we can yes. see what happened. Came down a little awkward. Right away, grabbed that ankle. I don't know if it landed on the foot maybe of Tyler Stewart or he just landed awkwardly because of the contact. Yeah, it just looked like he landed awkwardly. And a hush has come over the Robin Center crowd, and understandably so. I think he's going to be okay. He's... Golden with 13 would have an opportunity for a three-point play, or somebody will have an opportunity for the three-point play. One more look. Yep. He comes down. Oh, it buckled a little bit once he landed on that left foot. His leg, a little buckling. A lot of times, hopefully, it just scares you how you fall and how you land awkwardly. So maybe he's going to be okay, and we hope he is. Jay DeMeo, the Spider strength and conditioning coach there, helping with Adam Smith. And they'll take him either to the bench, probably into the corner. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. He rolled the ankle. He rolled the ankle. The left ankle rolled over. <laughs> Trying to put a little weight on it, but can't. And they'll get him a seat over there in the corner. Nathan Ko will take take the free throw, and that's the choice of the opposing coach. He picks one of the four other guys yeah. on the court to shoot the free throw, and of course they've done their homework. Nathan, 58 percent at the line last year, so he knocks it down. Yep. Well, as we said, that was a start. That's a three-point play. It comes with the clock stop. Five and a half to go. You got it in single digits. Well, and Grant looks good over there walking with it. Oh, that's a backbreaker of a three by Isaiah Blackman. That is their 12th three-pointer of the game. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, Grant. Yeah, bonus. he's already back at yeah. the scores table. You can see him at the top of the screen. That'll get a lift for the Spiders. Crowd will certainly appreciate that when he comes back in the game. That's a big time three by Nick Sherrod. Now they got to dig in, Bob. They got to make stops here. Can't trade buckets. 450 left. You got to make some stops here with your Richmond Spiders. Nine point game. Braxton and now Stewart. Meredith, the long-range shooter, you want him to put the ball on the floor. Blackman again for three more. He's got 20. He had 11 20-point games last year. He had 15 the other night against VCU and 20 tonight against Richmond. <laughs> Big-time shots, Bob. But you said it, Greg. You can't just trade baskets at this point. Francis off the dribble with the rainbow jumper. He's in double figures with 11. Under four minutes to go. Got to get right up on him now. You still have those fouls to give. Got to get some turnovers. Got to get some steals. Yes, you do. Make some stops. Rebound especially if you make the stops. Yeah. Meredith in the corner. Stewart with the dribble drive. And the shovel underneath, and Nathan Kao swats it away. Francis to Gilliard to Sherrod. Couldn't get it to go. Yeah, that would have been a big one. Yep. Great block by Kao, though, Bob. Easy layup for Red Flash, and he came out of nowhere to block that. Spiders have blocked some shots tonight. That's six of them. Need more defensive stops like that. Braxton with the jump stop, missed it, but another offensive rebound. Kusavis finishes. Yeah, when someone comes over to help, you must rotate and stop the guy from getting to the rim. And that time, Kusavis went right to the rim. And it's back to a 12-point game. And Sherrod fouled, and he hits the floor hard. It'll bring us to our last officials timeout. Grant Golden limping ever so gingerly will be coming back into the game for the Spiders. And they'll need a run in the last 2.52 of the contest. St. Francis with a 12 point lead. Bob Black, Greg Beckwith on ESPN Plus tonight. Our Spider TV crew producing it for ESPN Plus this evening. 2.52 to go, give you a game reset. St. Francis with the 12 point lead. Richmond is shooting the one and one, but the Spiders have committed only four team fouls here in the second half. And Coach Moody has just one timeout remaining. St. Francis with two and the possession arrow points to the red flash. Well, Bob, I look for the Spiders. Sherrod makes these two shots. Really get up after them and, and then do some run and jump and trapping. You have to try to get some steals and get some quick buckets. I just think that they have to try to get up and double team and force the issue here. Nick Sherrod with his 10th career 20 point game. Like he never missed a beat. Cuts it to a 10 point game. The press came, but St. Francis beat it easily. And Golden blocks the dunk attempt. It's really the only thing he could do there. Yeah, that's a good foul. Yep. Put him on the free throw line. Grant back in the game following that scare with the twist of the ankle. Goal, 
Kuzavis to the free throw line. He is not a good free throw shooter. That's the guy you want there. Five of 17 a season ago. 0 for 1 tonight. 0 for 2. A big miss. 10-point game with 2.40 to go. Sherrod all the way to the basket. 4-2. 22 for Nick. The press in the backcourt and the foul. Yeah, Sherrod good. went for the steal. It's a good foul. It's a good foul. Yep. That's the kind of pressure you're looking for. I would, I would let... Yeah, Bob, I would let, as we watch this play by Nick going to the basket, nice dribble drive, penetration, but I I let Kusafis catch the ball and foul him yes. immediately. Yep. Six-team foul. Now it will be one and one, so your strategy even more appropriate. And lengthen the game as much as you can with only 2.20 to go. And Sherrod's going to foul Braxton, figuring I really have no choice. We need to stop the clock. Yeah. But Braxton is a really good free throw shooter who lives at the line during the regular season. Again, what you want to do normally if a bad free throw shooter out there, you want to face guard everyone and force him to throw it to the, the poor free throw shooter. Well, you got him to miss it. So that worked. It's only an eight-point game, 2.10 to go. You're in striking distance. Sherrod off the front of the rim. Francis follows off the front of the rim. And Kuzavis the rebound. Two pretty good looks there. And now we're under two minutes to go. Braxton's only going to give it up if he's forced to give it up. And now Stewart, 10 on the shot clock. There's the guy you want to foul. That's the smart play. Even with six on the shot clock, I guess you could argue you could have let that one play out, but as soon as he touched the ball, no doubt they wanted to foul him. Yeah, stops the clock, and your odds are good that he's going to miss at least one. He is 0 for 2 at the line, now 1 for 3 as he hits the front end of the 1-1, one and, one, and he's got 9 points. And it's a 9-point lead. And he made them both. Back to double figures with a minute 35 to go. Gilliard finds Francis for 3. 14 for Blake, down to a seven-point game. Still a minute 22 to go, and a foul right in front of the spider bench. Tough call there. That is. Tough call. <laughs> Looked like the Spiders had a good double team going here with KO. Man, where's that foul? I like Nick Sherrod's call of a travel better than a foul yeah, there. Travel. He, lo he lost his balance, Bob. That's what happened. Braxton missed the front end of the one and one a moment ago. This is the last one and one. After this, everything will be the two shot opportunity. 17th point for Keith Braxton. A lot of points, Bob. 89 points yeah. for the Red Flash. One of two again. Now you got to go with a minute 20 to play. Down yep. eight. A lot of time. That would be big. And is by Sherrod. 25 for Nick. And the Spiders use their last time out. Huge shot by Nick Sherrod on that. Wow. It's a long three by Nick. Talk about behind the three-point line. <laughs> <laughs> Add three more feet to that line yeah. to find Nick Sherrod. Well, he had a 32-point game his sophomore year against George Mason. 
He's at 25 tonight on his return after missing almost all of last year with the knee injury. And you got it down to five now with a minute 12 to go, and you can keep extending this game. Yes, yes. And put him at the free throw line. You don't get the steal. Put him at the free throw line to earn him, earn those points. That was Richmond's last time out. St. Francis has two. The Spiders on the next foul will be the double bonus for St. Francis, so you will have to contend with that. But as well as they've shot the ball, they're only 12 of 18 at the free throw line, 67%. From the three-point line, though, they have been uncanny, 13 of 26. Same numbers for Richmond. Yeah, I'm surprised to keep Kusuba said, Bob. Still in the game? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go with 112 to play. Spiders go with a small line up here. They'll chase all over the floor. Inbound to Meredith, and he finds Braxton. Braxton guarded by Francis. They've matched up before. Burton knocks the ball away. Burton takes it to the basket, and he stuffs it. Now it's a three-point game with a minute to go. And a steal by Francis. He had it and lost it. Sherrod comes up with it for the tie. That's the guy to foul right away on the rebound. Kusavis and the Spiders do. But here they come. A furious comeback by the Richmond Spiders. Big time steal by Burton again, Bob. Just quick hands. And able to finish it with a dunk. You see the athleticism of that kid. He has made the most of his 15 minutes tonight, hasn't he? He has. Now a two-shot opportunity here for Kusavis. You get him to miss both. It's a one-possession game with 48-5 to go. Not sure what they're looking at here. They are sending the teams. The officials are sending the teams to their respective benches, so this will act as a timeout for Chris Mooney that he doesn't have. That's interesting. I don't know if it's a clock management issue. I don't know that there was anything on the play, Greg. Was there no. a foul? Yeah, it's Time. a timing yeah. purposes. See how much time went off. Look at the clock. And again, the officials can control the clock. You see those belt packs on the back of their waist that would automatically stop the clock. What a, what a great comeback by the Spiders, yes. Bob. Down 12 with 2.52 left. And the Spiders have really cut it down. A three-point lead with 48.5 left in the game. They turned up the defensive pressure, and then they made some shots offensively, particularly Nick Sherrod with 25 points. Yeah. Now, this is a big three by Nick. Well beyond the three-point line there. Big pull-up. And a nice steal by Burton that time. And the finish with the dunk. Love the finish. Done that a couple times tonight. I love his game tonight. Yep. Really aggressive. A lot of energy he brought. His dad was almost a Richmond Spider. Dad, Quinton, played at Providence during their glory years. Couple of NCAA yep. appearances. And when Quinton... His dad was being recruited. It came down to Providence and Richmond. How about that? Yeah. Glad Tyler made the other choice. Yes. <laughs> no influence by the dad. He no. may have. Tyler had some other interest from other A-10 schools. Greg will get an explanation here. They stop the clock out a minute. You don't stop it under a minute. I mean, out a minute, it's under. So it was a timing issue. When the Spiders scored, there was exactly a minute remaining in the game. And technically, you're not supposed to yep. stop the clock until a basket is made under a minute. Yep. a minute. So they've reviewed the tape, and they have taken seven seconds 
off of the clock, down to 41. And you know Chris Moody doesn't like that. He needs the time. Yeah, it's still one possession game. Yeah. He's got to make these free throws. A lot of time left, in my opinion, to still somehow pull this game out. Kusavis is two for four at the line, and he's had three or four minutes to think about these two. There's the first miss. And miss or make, the Spiders do not need a three. It would be great to get a three if that's the best shot. But with 41 seconds to go, you could drive it to the basket and get a two, maybe an and one. One of two at the line. And now he'll come out of the game. Kusavas will, and Miles Thompson comes back in. So a four-point game with 41 seconds to go. Gilliard will push it in a hurry. Take it to the basket. For, there you go. And there he goes, and they'll let him go. And now it's a two-point game, and there's nothing wrong with that. And here comes the press. Good double team. Burton and Gilliard, and that's out of bounds. The Spiders think it's their ball. The official pointed St. Francis' way, but I think that's... Yeah, they're going to look at gonna that. They're going to look and see yeah. if Richmond certainly thinks it's the Spider ball. What a great comeback. Yeah, it's a nice comeback by the Spiders. That was too easy though, Bob. They really gave him, they didn't challenge him at all. They just gave him the shot. There's the Gilliard layup and then a terrific Gilliard and Burton double team right here on the baseline. Uh, yeah, they, if, he, if they're calling a step out, if he stepped on the line, it's the Spiders ball. If they're calling the ball knocked out and it's hit the line, then it's St. Francis ball. It depends on how these referees called it. As Greg said, this was a 12-point lead for St. Francis with 2.52 to go. In fact, the red flash led by 10 with a minute 41 to go. Take another look and see yep. where the ball goes out of bounds and off of whom. See, if they call that. Now, it looked like they called him stepping out on the line. That's what the that's what the question mark is going to be. What did they call the smack out of the ball, the ball out of bounds, or the stepping on the line with his foot? So Gilliard smacks at the ball there. Yeah, is that out? And if that hit the line, then it would be St. Francis ball. Yep. If it's because Stewart picked it up on the line, then it would be yeah. Richmond ball. Exactly. Yes, they're giving the ball to St. Francis, and the crowd in an uproar. So they called the ball hitting the line when Gilliard slapped it away. It's a tough place to inbounds, though. And he so, can't run that baseline, yeah. right? He can't move. That's Braxton to inbound to Meredith. Meredith's pass is stolen by Jacob Gilliard, and Gilliard is fouled. <laughs> Only the eighth St. Francis turnover of the game, and who better to get it than Jacob Gilliard? <laughs> he also just got an Academy Award, too. Uh, is that a flop? No. That's not a flop. He didn't <laughs> fall down. He just acted a little bit. And there was some contact there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not enough to blow the whistle unless Jacob had made himself very well known. Yeah, well, I tell you what, if he had called a flop on that one, they had to run out of this building. <laughs> Well, it's one and one. It's the ninth team foul on St. Francis, but what a remarkable spider comeback. This could tie the game. It was St. Francis by 12 with 2.52 to go. And by 10 with 1.41 to go. And we're tied. 20 for Jacob Gilliard, his 13th 20-point game as a Spider. What a nice comeback. This big shot by Nick. We kind of think Sherrod. that one started, yeah, it, didn't that we? That deep big, three yeah. by Sherrod, and then the defense by the freshman, Tyler yeah. Burton. Good activity by Burton all night. 
And then this that is was an the easy, easy one, right? Yeah, yeah. I was surprised it was that easy. And then the turn over here. <laughs> well, he's approaching 200 steals in his Richmond career, so that should not be a surprise to anyone, no matter how young or old you may be as a Spider fan. Spiders go with their smaller athletic lineup. Continue to press in a tie game with 27 seconds to go. Braxton will call St. Francis's last timeout. The final 23 seconds of regulation from the Robin Center on opening night for the Richmond Spiders. Gustafson guards Braxton. Ten seconds. Braxton, one-on-one. -on -one. Gustafson, KO helps on defense. Blackman, teardrop, floater, no, and we're going overtime on opening night. As the Spiders have rallied from a 12-point deficit with under three minutes to go to send it into OT. Yeah, that's great defense down the stretch, Bob, and the, that last stand for defense was really spectacular by the Richmond Spiders. They didn't let anyone drive to the hoop. We will catch our breath and come back with overtime. Richmond and St. Francis at 90-90. 90 points, Bob. A lot of points in this <laughs> first sure game. Was. And the Spiders win the tip. A lot of points for Nick Sherrod, 25. A lot for Jacob Gilliard, 20. They have led the Spiders. Grant Golden is back out there. Sherrod for the lead. Off the rim. Good fight by Nathan Kao. It will belong to St. Francis, though, on the alternating possession, but that means the Spiders will have the arrow right back. Stay up if you're the Richmond Spiders. They really cause them a lot of problems. Yeah, that pressure defense is what ignited the comeback. It steals from Gilliard and Burton. Big baskets by Sherrod and Gilliard. Braxton slips and falls and loses the ball. So they've committed a couple of costly turnovers. Not many of them, but the timeliness of them. And again, Richmond could take the lead. Golden has a mismatch with Meredith on him, and Golden scores. Yes. Nice recognition. 15 for Grant Golden. Spiders' first lead since 11 minutes to go in the second half. Braxton behind his back move, but didn't shoot. Tough one by Stewart. Swish. Real tough shot. 20 points for the 6'8 redshirt sophomore from Silver Spring, Maryland. There goes Jacob Gilliard. That'll be goaltending. Jake has 22, and the Spiders lead by two. Back and forth we go. A minute and a half into the overtime. Now Nathan Kale taking a turn on Keith Braxton, and the Spiders let him go for a layup. Uh, a little confusion that time. Miscommunication on the pick and roll. Keith Braxton with 19. Good bounce pass. Gilliard to Sherrod for the finger roll. <laughs> 27 for Sherrod. What a difference he makes. Uh. Braxton off the dribble. Stewart guarded by Sherrod. Good defense. And the shot is in and out. And it's Richmond's ball. Wow. This is a big possession here. Yes. They get up two buckets, Bob. Gilliard and Francis in the backcourt. Golden, Sherrod, Ko up front. Gilliard to the basket, and a foul. 
Uh, that was fortunate there. That looked like a good block. Tyler Stewart picks up his fourth foul. It's a quick move by Jake. Yeah, they got, they got fortunate there. May have got him in a little body, but looked like a good block. Two free throws coming here for Jacob Gilliard, who is six of seven at the line. His 23rd point. Coaching and Sherrod, yes, have combined for 50 of them. Missed the second. So it's still a one possession lead here with 2.20 to go. But it's a lead for the Richmond Spiders. Yeah. Catch and shoot for three by Blackman to tie the game at 97. Wow. That's a big time curl shot right there. Sherrod looks to answer, left it short. Braxton the rebound, and now St. Francis can regain the lead. They got to be running on adrenaline now. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Playing their second game in Richmond in the past four days with two bus trips in between four and a half hours each. 5 to shoot. Good defense on Stewart. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Great defense there. Great defense. Just when the Spiders needed it in a game filled with offense, that's a big time defensive yeah. stop. They made stops when they had to. It's a good play by Nick Sherrod getting his hand on the ball that time. Grant Golden comes back offensively here for Richmond. Andre Gustafson goes out. Can Richmond break the tie? So a two-man game here, Bob. With, you have Golden and Grant uh, and a Gilliard. Mm -hmm. There's a step back and... Francis, dribble drive underneath the basket to KO. Great look, Francis, and the finish by KO. Richmond by two with 99 on the board. Blackman, Braxton. That's a knuckleball that's in and out by Thompson. And the biggest rebound of the game belongs to Nick Sherrod, his sixth. But the Spiders turn it over. And Blackman has it knocked away by Gilliard and out of bounds. Uh, great play, great hustle by Jake to come back. Didn't give up on it. Yeah. Get a stop here, the Spiders. And pretty much will get to the free throw line because I'm sure St. Francis will have to foul. Shot clock is off. Keith Braxton will inbound. Got it into Blackman. Catch and shoot three, spills out, and another Nick Sherrod rebound. Gilliard's got the ball, and he's fouled. Nick Sherrod has come up big. He's come up big, Bob. Big rebound by Nick Sherrod. We talked all last year about how much the Spiders missed him. Never was it more apparent than it is with him back on the floor now. How about this, his eighth rebound of the game in traffic. Yes. And then he knew who to get the ball to, Jacob Gilliard. It's gonna be a one possession game with 10.6 to go. Each team has one timeout. Gilliard, 7 of 10 at the line. Point number 100 gives the Spiders a three-point lead. Richmond uses that timeout. 24 for Gilliard.
Gilliard went for the steal and almost had it. He got a hell ball. It belongs to Richmond. Jacob Gilliard came flying out of nowhere for the steal. Uh, what a play by Jake. Again, quick hands and then tied up the steward on that play. Oh, <laughs> Jake Gilliard. Gilliard's fifth steal of the game. Plus eight assists and only one turnover. And oh yeah, 24 points. Oh, but the Spiders lose the ball with three, with two, and there's the foul. What a heady play by Jacob Gilliard. So that St. Francis could not take a potential game-tying three-pointer. Yeah, smart play, smart play. For all the physical plays he's made tonight, Greg, the one he just made with his hand yes. might have saved the day for Richmond. Yeah, that's a good mental play. Because Keith Braxton was lining up what could have been a game-tying three-pointer. Here it is. Yeah. And Jacob made sure he raised his hand right away. Yes, sir. That's the best foul I've ever taken. Braxton has 20, and now Rob Krimble will use his last timeout. <laughs> K.O. and Golden ready to rebound on the low block. Braxton did not hit the rim. You got to hit the rim when you miss. So the ball goes back to Richmond with 1.9 to go. Now Sherrod cannot run the baseline down there. He's got Golden. Gustafson, Francis, and Gilliard. And Coach Mooney is reminding Nick Sherrod, don't move, you can't move. Sherrod to Gilliard, and that'll do it. That will end the game. It's in Jacob Gilliard's hands. The Spiders rally from 12 down with under three minutes to go and beat St. Francis 100 to 98 in the Spider season opener. Here's Greg Beckwith with Coach Chris Booney. All right, Bob, thanks a lot. Coach, you're, you're down 12, 252 left in regulation. How'd you make the comeback? Well, uh, <laughs> there's some toughness shown. You know, the first game of the year, a lot of times the defense is ahead of the offense. We're obviously not in that position, but uh, you know, Jacob was incredible. You know, you know we've been a good pressing team over the last couple of years, it's been lost a little bit because we haven't been able to press quite as much. I think it's something that can be good for us, but mainly we stayed calm. I'm so happy, Greg, for Nick. I don't want to uh, lose my composure, but what a game for him, and it's a really important game for us. You know, the, the opener probably couldn't be more important for most teams in the, in the, in the country, so uh, proud of us, um, and, and, you know, a lot of things to work on on defense. Talk about the freshman play. Burton, he came in and showed a lot of energy, athleticism, made a big steal in that, that comeback. Talk about his play tonight. You know, I really think he's going to be special, Greg, and uh, you know, I try not to throw that word around too much. He's, he can do everything. He's committed to basketball. He's serious about basketball. Uh, has a chance to be a really special player for us and, um, you know, was, was proud of how he played. And, and we played. We fought. Down 12. You said it was 2.52 to go. Uh, to be able to just stay calm while being aggressive, that, that's an important one. I don't, I don't think we took any bad shots, even though you know we didn't take any 12-point shots, as they would say, and handled all that very well. Congratulations, a big win, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Talking about a really great player tonight, Nick Schrott did a great job, hit some big key shots. I win Nick Schrott, player of the game. Talk about this game and what it means to get a big victory like this. Uh, it's amazing. Um, just the heart we showed. Um, I'm, I'm speechless. The way the game went, how uh, we got down a little bit down the stretch, and how we fought back. Uh, just a credit to our guys. We're a lot tougher this year than we've been in the past. I think in the past we would have let the league get away from us, but we stayed together, and I'm glad we came out with the win. Talk about some defensive stops you made down the stretch. You're, you're down 12 with 2.52 left. Put the pressure on them. Talk about the comeback. Uh, we don't want to be in that position too much, but we, we knew we had a good press. Uh, we've shown in the past that if we're in that position, we can get steals and get turnovers. So, I mean, when we got down 12, we knew we had to scrap, and we did that. We knew we had guys who could get steals, though, and make plays, and they did that.
for you personally, Nick. You played six games last year, come back from ACL tear. What's this mean to you to get back on the floor and play like you did in your first game home? I'm just glad it's over with. <laughs> it was a long process. Um, I had a lot of nerves coming to the game. I wasn't sure how the game was going to go. Um, and for it to go the way it did, I'm just so happy. Uh, give a lot of credit to my trainer, uh, Jay DeMeo, uh, Adam. Those guys, Adam Smith, they put a lot of uh, time and effort into me. My family always believed in me. And obviously it's a good start, but it's just one game. So we got a big one on Thursday, and we're excited to be ready for that one. Congratulations, Nick. All right, Bob, we'll send it back to you after an exciting first game. The Spiders scored 100 points tonight, and they're a home opener with a victory over St. Francis Red Flash.